Bro. Ran it up a hundred thug. Dumma 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 die. Dumma dumma. Doug dumma dumma. It's a duck, it's a duck, it's a duck, dim a dome. Dunk dim a dome. Doug dim a dome. Alright, we got the we got the Twitch stream set up. Make sure you guys like like this before we even get started. <clears throat> before we even get started, make sure you like it. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Um obviously you guys see the markets are having a pullback. And this is something that we talked about last live stream, if some of you guys remember. Okay, if you go back and click on the YouTube, if you were watching the live stream last Sunday or Saturday, um, you know we talked about a pullback, you know, it's possible for sure. Why is it possible? And especially in Qs, I think the Qs may have a bit more downfall um, to it. I mean, based off of all the divergence that we were seeing on that Sunday. I mean, this is literally making, this is bear diverging while this is bull di or making higher highs, right? That's something that we talked about. But uh, I'm gonna let the live stream cook up a little bit and then we'll, we'll we'll get even more into it, okay? We'll get even more into it. Where is the cues going? Hey man, you tune into the right place. You tune into the right place, okay? Trust me, we'll talk about We'll talk about where the cues could potentially go, okay? If you guys remember last week, we, you know, a pullback is definitely possible is what we said. I mean, I could pull this up for you guys, you know, see what we talked about for a little bit. That's something that you got to keep in mind. This is, this is the, this is why you need to pull back subscribe to the YouTube. 20, you know, retest the 21 EMA like we've been doing this entire cycle, like you've seen right here, you know, like you've seen over here. You know, we could come down and do something like that and, you know, gear it for the next run and... Right, so that's not, that's something we talked about the previous live stream. You know that a pullback could potentially come, and you know it's looking more and more likely just based off a few things that we're looking at. Especially we look at the spy, and uh, you know IWM and Bitcoin, etc., and and kind of the theses of the market. But um, you know, firstly, you have to understand that this, this goes much higher. Okay, we have price targets all the way to five hundred on the queues. Okay, I think I think I think the queues could get to five hundred four. You know, potentially. You know, it could get it could get pretty crazy. And what what we're gearing up for right now is, in my opinion, you know, obviously we got to break below some levels, you know, four thirty five, et cetera. But what's happening is lower, higher lows. I mean, we haven't even made a higher high until we can really start closing above four forty six. So that's the main thing that uh, we're gonna be paying attention to. Let's make sure we get to two k likes on the TikTok before we really get started, though. In the S and P five hundred, we we'll look at both. But first, we need to we need to get some we need to get some likes. My boy Burton here. I haven't seen Burton in a while. MSTR to one thousand one hundred. Yeah, I mean potentially. I mean, but this is a three K stock, so. Dang man, we were talking about this. A lot of you guys remember, man. We don't need to even say it. This is why it's the most accurate live stream. You know that you could be a part of and that's just a fact like we've been talking about this entire move for some time now giving you the game um and yeah but mstr you know of course it, it could potentially come down i can see it coming down yeah for sure i mean as long as it's making these higher these lower highs like you see i mean until it can really start breaking back above 1600 and holding but um yeah anyways you look at SPY, we talked about the Qs, you look at SPY as well. Really, I want to start looking at individual tickers. Um, I think the market is going through a brief shift. I mean, you're, you're seeing people take out money to pay their taxes, etc. But what you're getting for SPY as well is, I mean, higher lows. You know, like th this is going to end up sliding more, in my opinion. Um, to what price target? You know, I think it could potentially retest the 21 EMA, which which wouldn't be foreign, which wouldn't even be crazy because that's kind of what it's been doing, you know, as we as we go up, you can potentially get something like this and, you know, some consolidation and, you know, so 
how do we prepare for this is the main thing we need to be paying attention to and what what um what day trades can we get into etc but yeah this looks like it's going to continue to slide i mean it's making higher lows etc you know until we can actually start holding above 520 that's when that's when we can start looking um for some more calls but um yeah let's look at Let's look at some individual stocks. Spy will go rocket on Monday. I yeah, I mean, a bounce is definitely due. You're seeing all this bull divergence. So, this is the main thing. We know the market is going to continue to to go higher. Okay, that's why it's kind of difficult to short some of this stuff. You know, for for spy, I have it potentially getting you know all the way up to five sixty and you know potentially even six hundred. Potentially even 600, okay? So these brief pullbacks, we're in a buy the dip type of market. We're for sure in a buy the dip type of market, okay? But let's look at the dollar. Let's look at the dollar. And then we'll look at, we'll look at, yeah. We'll look at, um, yeah, like, I mean, you look at the dollar. I mean, come on now. What do you do when the dollar is this strong? But it is coming into some sort of resistance. And, you know, I put I had us going into a super run. You know, I, I changed this. You know, we might have to change it to April to June. But I thought it was going to happen in February to, you know, where we see right now. But the dollar, you know, just said no. But when the dollar starts correcting and going down to where I do see it going down to, which is around $94, we're just getting some sort of, you know, retracement to the upside, et cetera, which is no big deal. You know, it could potentially retest 108. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But I do think the market goes a lot higher. The dollar, in my opinion, is going to lead the way, like it's been doing. But we're seeing it, you know, boost up. But who, who cares? Okay, who cares? We know this is. We know the market's going to lie. Um. But yeah, let's move on. So we saw the cues. We saw spy. Let's look at some individual tickers, man. You guys will look at IBM. Put in the comments what individual tickers will and we'll look at them. And we'll look at them. TikTok might have shadow banned us, but we still gonna we still gonna we still gonna let it rock. Cause I post these on YouTube anyways. Arc. Alright, let's look at um I'm trying to find what I see a lot of you guys talking about. Let's look at A and B. Let's look at A and B. Okay, so for AMD, I mean, it's literally, it's, it's at, it's literally at a bounce level. Yeah. It's at a bounce level. But the thing is, I mean, you look at it and it's breaking down from this flag, so you know we potentially have a price target i would say down to 152 ish i would say down to 152 ish but i wouldn't be surprised if we see some sort of upside first and then we get that move to 152 okay so i'm not looking to buy amd until we get to, down to 152 but i i do think amd goes a lot higher i mean we can see this and first of all, it hit the, it literally hit that 230, that 1.69, 1.618 EMA or uh, Fibonacci perfectly. And I don't think semiconductor season is over. Like I said, I think we're just getting a brief little pullback. But yeah, I, I, I would like to pick it up. Let me see. Yeah. I mean, if we're looking for good swings, like the main thing I like to do is look for good swings. You guys know me, man. I, I like buying time on some of this stuff and just letting it rock. But right now, I think it's the perfect opportunity to, to kind of start looking for day trades until you get to those perfect buying points. Like the market is going to set up right now. It's going to set up so perfectly. It's going to trick out so many people. And then it's going to set up, set up so perfectly. What we're getting right now, in my opinion... 
is what we haven't gotten since some of you guys remember last year in and I think it was October some of you guys remember the market was going down I was live we were live we were sitting on here live begging you to buy that dip begging you to get into some long-term holds and by December by January by February you literally reaped the rewards I think the same sort of thing is gonna happen potentially right now I mean you're getting you're literally getting neutral market you're getting a lot of fear inside the put and calls this is literally at 0.83 it hasn't been up there since since January of last year you know since December November you know October so if we can really start pushing this above one which I think it does get above I think we're gonna get an amazing 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 buying opportunity like we haven't seen since last year in in October and to me that is where man I know you guys seen the 30k days 30k days we was going stupid okay we was going stupid now you know I like I like coming out here being transparent first of all now what you see is you know I'm down eight I'm down I'm down 8k for today <laughs> I'm down 8k but the reason that that's like okay like all right is because I I've had quadruple that in green you understand like I got caught in a range I got caught in a range with Baba you know ATXN but I'm gonna always show you guys the losses first of all like yeah it is what it is <laughs> it is what it is but what I what I do know is that the market goes a lot higher and if we could push this above 1.10 you know, we could get the we get this more in fear. I think we're gonna get a generation. Like I'm telling you, man, I'm literally telling you. I I haven't been this excited since since last year October. Why? Because we're finally getting like if you look at if you look at what Spy and the Qs have been doing, bro, <laughs> bro. Like this is the monthly time frame. You got November. You got December. You got January. You got February. You got March. To where it's like there's not great great entries you're kind of you know but now what you're getting is two weeks red you know you got a potential pullback all the way to 490 you got you got money being taken out of the market to where now we're getting better entries and i'm excited but um that's the main thing i'm paying attention to. i'm glad we looked at the fear the fear and greed we looked at amd i think amd could potentially come down to you know inside of this buying area 147 you know inside of here i think it does have a little bit more downside to it okay i mean it's about to complete this head and shoulders that you see right here but it is sitting at demand okay so if you didn't catch it you know on friday when it boosted up to 171 now it's back at 163 i would at least wait for some sort of retracement to the upside you know maybe like a little fake out pop on monday or you know something like that because you don't want to get in when you missed you missed the good part like it was that it was that one i think park got into this actually and made a lot of people money in the discord but like you're buying you're buying part than the people who got into that cause you know 90 percent 100 percent 180 percent you know there's really yeah so i'd wait for this to you know either get a slight bounce to the upside or just look for a different play anyways let's move on put in the comments what stocks you guys want to look at man TikTok got me shadow banned, but it's okay. We're still gonna go through with the live stream because, like I said, we post it on YouTube anyways. And I, I'm I'm starting to you know transition to YouTube. Let's look at Square. AMD will hit 170. If it hits 170, I think that's a perfect a perfect opportunity for you. Um, but Square. Okay. Yeah, this thing ugly. This thing is really ugly. But again, it's forming. It's forming. Like, come on now, it's forming. And the thing is, man. You know, I think this could potentially get down to 170. But the thing is, a lot of these stocks are kind of forming this exact same thing. You can't be you can't be bullish, first of all. I always tell you guys, when a stock breaks above the left shoulder, so I wouldn't be bullish on square until you get it actually breaking above this left shoulder. And remember, when we're bullish, you know, we, we, we go live a lot. When we're bullish and we, we want to get into calls on a stock and it's in a head and shoulders type of pattern like you're seeing square in. Now, obviously, the sentiment of the market has shifted a little bit because, you know, it does look like we're going to come down a little bit more, et cetera. The market, the market tones are changing a bit. 
but I wouldn't be bullish on square until it can break above this left shoulder because once it breaks above this left shoulder like you've seen here we've seen stocks break above that left shoulder and then retest the head okay so I'd only be start being bullish on square if it breaks above this left shoulder which is around eighty dollars and then it's gonna start retesting you know eighty seven the head okay all right but until then you have to respect this formation and to be honest I think this could, you know, even get down to the Fibonacci, which is around 72. 72. But the thing is, like, some of you guys, like, the reason I wouldn't be looking for shorts too much heading into next week is because of what transpired today and on Wednesday a little bit. You got a lot of blood. You got the market, you know, it... <laughs> You're, you're buying you're buying not at a good at a good point in my opinion okay so instead I would see what square does at 75 if it breaks below if it breaks below 75 that's when I'll start getting puts okay but until then if it's holding above 75 70 I, I would there's no way I I get into puts because you're not even getting a good opportunity you're not buying a good a good uh, you, you don't get you don't got a good entry if you're trying to get into puts okay so inside of here I like calls above 80, 80, 25, you know, above the left shoulder, and then puts below 75, 70. Inside of here, you're not getting a good entry, okay? So, yeah, that's why I think it's square. And obviously, in the obviously we're just talking about what's happening in, in the short in the shorter term of things, okay? The, we, square, in my opinion, we can look at the bigger picture, which you guys know me, man. I love looking at the bigger picture of things. And we can see this is about to break above this left shoulder, head, in this right shoulder now I'm not gonna say it's gonna retest this top but I do think square goes a lot higher inside of these markets I think square can easily go above a hundred dollars you know I think even 134 is my price target on something like square so if you're looking to get you know some some August or or some September calls that's what I'll be paying attention to that's where the real money is okay now we're coming out here talking about some day trades and scouts because and you know what could potentially happen next week and you know really the month of April but what you should be preparing for like while this is happening is what am I about to get into on these September on these October calls on these July calls that is where the true money is made and I can tell you guys that because I've been doing it <laughs> I've been doing it okay somebody said 460 next week on spy that's crazy if spy goes to 460 next week man come on bro don't do that all right so let's look at nvidia i see nvidia popping up there um and we will be looking at arm like look you guys know me man i get so excited i'm so excited when we when we actually start getting some pullbacks and we, when we start getting some red candles now the only thing i messed up on is that i didn't i didn't transition quick enough like i should have i should have been like man april people gotta pay their taxes people like April is is historically a very bullish month, which means come on now, a lot of people now know that, so it's probably gonna be bearish. So I, you know, I didn't go with my gut feelings on a lot of this stuff, but now it's like okay, God is preparing me for for this dip that we're gonna have, and for us to reload, man. I'm telling you to reload. We haven't had a good pullback since last year October, when I begged you guys to buy. I think the same situation is gonna happen again. But um, let's look at Nvidia. A lot of people like shortening video once the market gets bearish, okay? <laughs> Just to let you know, a lot of people love shortening video when the market gets bearish. And the thing with NVIDIA is that it never gives you a truly, truly, truly bearish day. I mean, today it went down $24, but what you got to realize is that it bounced up from 830 all the way to back to 906. Okay, so when I'm looking at something like NVIDIA, what I think is going to, you know, happen, I think it goes up maybe a bit more, and I would like to short it at, you know, 917 around this area around this area okay I would like to short it around this 917 920 area but other than that I mean this thing is I don't really like looking at Nvidia for shorts in general and I don't really like looking at calls as much when I know there's better opportunities than Nvidia like we just looked at AMD and AMD was at 220 now it's at 1 60 and I think those are potentially better to get into long term versus Nvidia just because it's so expensive but you know I, th I like the short at 917 920 anything 
anything below that, you know, over here, I don't really mess with. But the reason I say that is because you're gonna, you might get something that looks like this, which is the, uh, which is the Wall Street cheat sheet, uh, you know, little image. I see this. I see this happen so much, where you get that slight little pop, and then you get that. Oh, it's about to come back up, and then you know you get that dump. I've seen that happen on a bunch of charts. I think you might get something like that heading into uh, this as well. You might get something, you know, and then. But you know, Nvidia, I think Nvidia, I think goes a lot higher as well. But yeah, I like it. I like to short it at nine seventeen, nine twenty. That's the only way I'm looking to short it. I do think it goes a bit lower. And you know, it, it always comes back and retests that 21 EMA as well. I mean, we could look at the first run that it had. We could look at the first run that it had, you know, from December 2022 all the way to August 2023, which was an entire year where it just ran up. And then, you know, it came, it always comes back to that 21 EMA. I think you're going to get something kind of similar. I mean, we can even look at, I want to look at something even more interesting, which is, which is, um, you know how long has this cycle been like how long has it been going up this is when it bottomed out right here and it took oh shoot this is the percent let's go to the date range this is the date range 161 days all right that's that's how long this one took how long did this one take from the bottom from the bottom to the top around 230 days okay nothing really too crazy but yeah i think it's going to end up you know coming down to that 21 ema which it's been doing this for two years so you know i think it comes down a little bit a little bit a little bit but i'd only be interested to get that 917 920 short all right put in the comments what stocks you guys are looking at i see cues like we already went over cues we already went over the cues all right, we already went over the cues. But yeah, I don't, I don't really like looking at stocks that chop like this. To be honest, like this is very choppy to where, you know, there's really, you're kind of guessing at this point because it's been stuck in a chop for, bro, I, I would call all this chop. You know, since it, since it had that pump day, all it did was just sit here and chop, so. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one, but, you know, obviously if it starts breaking below some stuff, then yeah, but I think too many eyes are on this one to, to really, you know, for it to really do anything. It's been consolidating so long to where people are like, oh, yeah, it's finally going to break, and then it just jumps, and then, you know, I'm all right. I'll pass. Any long-term picks you got? Uh, we got some long-term picks. We got some long-term picks. Obviously, you gotta be in the Discord to see exactly what contract you know we pick out. But I do want to take a peek at IWM and TNA. I see I see some of you guys posting that inside of the inside of the chat. So we're gonna take a peek at some of them. Um, now, the reason IWM and you know a lot of the market is kind of resetting a, a little bit is because of you know they said they're not gonna uh, cut rates or whatever it may be. But I'm telling you right now, it's baloney. The market is, is gonna continue to go a lot higher. The only way you're going to get faked out by some of this stuff is if you buy short-term contracts and you don't believe. Okay, those are the only, those are the only two things that, that'll get you. All right? But you have to know that this market goes a lot higher, and especially IWM. I think IWM gets to around 300. But even right here, this thing is retesting the 21 EMA, which, in my opinion, is very, very important. Okay, you want to... First of all, this is a good dollar-cost average situation. So to where if you got July, September, October shoot man if you get december calls you're golden but if you get either one of those you're pretty much guaranteed look man i ain't gonna say guarantee but 80 to 85 percent of the chance 80, 80 to 85 percent of the chance you have of making money on something like iwm when you're buying it at this level i mean i'm looking at a few things and this is perfect this is perfect it's sitting at 21 ma has done that this entire year where it bounced it it's in an uptrend first of all but it's even it's even giving you some hidden bullish divergence where is making these higher highs or the yeah these higher lows but this is making a lower low okay so it's, it's hitting bull diverging um i mean it's it's literally just retesting the <laughs> it's literally just retesting some of the demand right here as well so 
I really like IWM, and we also have FOMC at I believe the end of April around there, and you, that's when you'll have Pal, you know, Pal coming on, and you know, he's usually he's probably gonna be dovish just like he was the last meeting as well. So, this is gonna be interesting. I think if you get some far out contracts, you'll probably do very well. Okay, but um, you know, we can look at price targets on IWM, and uh, I think IWM, you know, like I said, could go to potentially 300, and we'll be talking a lot about that. But also, I mean, if you look at the Fibonacci, this thing told you it was going to reject right here. I'm actually mad I wasn't paying more attention to this because you could have caught a very, very good short. Um, but, yeah, it literally told you it was going to reject at that 12.12. It's literally at the at the reject level. But I think this is going to end up getting to, you know, 294, you know, up here. Okay? Up here. I'm telling you guys right now. All right? We're going to come back. Did you buy the dip? Did you not? Did you make money? Did you not? I think this is going to be the of uh, uh, the easier, the easier times where you can make some money inside of the market. Okay, right now what you've been getting from, like I would say all of April and March is like scalpers and day trading and you know not 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 particularly fun, for me anyways. You guys know me, man. I like buying long term contracts and and just and just relaxing. And what you're getting on the queues, I mean from March first is really where where you 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 got the top out where it stopped going vertical, right? You have all this vertical movement, vertical, vertical. It's just going up. It's just going up. And then March 1st, all of a sudden, this is March 1st, which is funny enough. March 1st, all you're getting is this just, just ugliness, no vertical movement. So usually when this happens, you get, you know, maybe a, a little drop and then, you know, kick, kick it back off. But um, we'll have to see. I think it's, it's going to be interesting. Anyway, let's move on. Put in the comments what stocks you guys want to look at. I think MSTR puts could do very well. I'm not going to lie to you. Just because I, I think Bitcoin is going to end up getting the 50, 55K. I think a lot of people are getting euphoria right here. And, you know, it has to, when that happens, when you go on Twitter and you see a lot of people saying, oh, man, this is, this is the most obvious buy in the world, man. Bitcoin going to 100K, easy. That's when it's usually going to give you a nice little dip, and that's when it's usually going to fake out a bit of a bit of people. And to be honest, you know, I think I think that's what's going to happen right here. I think I think I think you know, Bitcoin has a chance to get into fifty two k, and that means a lot of the altcoins, you know, Solana, Ethereum, etc., they're going to dip a lot more, and you're going to end up getting a better entry on a lot of this stuff. In my opinion, of course, you know, we could we could zoom out of here and go crazy, but I think I think Bitcoin at fifty one k, fifty five k, and then. You know, it finally making that move a lot of people anticipated, which, you know, I think this could go stupid to obviously 100K and, you know, 150K. I think this could go obviously really, really dumb. But first, it has to get out the, you know, it's the market's going to market. The market's going to market it. And I think, I think you do see, you know, potentially Bitcoin at 51, 55 in that 50, in that 50K area. And that means MSTR, you know, that means riot. And, you know, that means a lot of this stuff is probably going to end up, you know, not performing well is but then again the 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 now mstr is different mstr has been performing with bitcoin so i'm not going to bring mstr in it but riot mara and btbt they kind of they kind of are opposite of what bitcoin does and they lag behind it like i've been saying all year so you know you might see the crypto miners do very well which is funny uh, but i do want to move on Let's look at um I seen a contract that went from two hundred dollars to fifty four K. Oh yeah, MSDR moving. Let's look at net. Ah man, it's choppy. Yeah, this is why I didn't I was looking at net and this is why I didn't mess with it too much is because I want to see it break out of this chop. Okay? If it doesn't break out of this chop, I don't really want to mess with it too much. Okay? I would love to see it at you know, around this 21 EMA, maybe $88 or, you know, $90. And that's be just because then we'll have a similar situation to what happened with Dell, where Dell came or it didn't come on the daily it did. Yeah, on the daily it did. Where is where is Nick? Ah, oh, I should chop. I ain't, I ain't messing with it. I ain't messing with it. I'm not messing with it. Let's look at Hershey. Hey, yo, Hershey bought the... Man, there's so many stocks I'm looking at now that are like, dang, I, I'm glad I didn't really mess with them. Because I was going to mess with Hershey, you know, over here. And it was at 196, 195. I'm glad I didn't. But um, 
I'm not seeing too much for this one. It's kind of sitting. I will say it's, it's up like it is on a trend. But, you know, I don't really like using that too much. But it is inside of this channel, you know, the risk to reward on calls right here isn't as bad as puts because puts you kind of miss this whole move to where if you got calls, you know, right here, you could easily stop out below like 184 or something. But, um, you know, I don't really like this one too much. Not like it's ugly. It's ugly, bro. Ugly, 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 ugly. I think there's a lot better, a lot better stocks that you can mess with. Let's look at uh, Shopify. I bought Apple and Amazon at close, hoping Iran is bluffing. All right, bro. That's crazy. All right, let's look at shop. Oh, man. Like, I'm telling y'all, man, we about to get so many good entries on a lot of this stuff. Like, if you look at what happened over here, this is exactly the same situation you're getting, okay? Obviously, Shopify is getting ready for its next leg up, okay? Obviously. And now you might get something kind of like what happened right here where it got that little boot up. And then, you know, it finally made it move down, you know, it could potentially. That would draw out the bull market, you know, almost to elections, in my opinion, because we're sitting here on the weekly. And I, I actually thought this bull market was going to be fast. I thought it was going to be accelerated, like we'll be done in June. But if we keep getting this pullback and we keep getting this consolidation, you know, it might draw out all the way into elections. And then, you know, Biden can obviously use the market at all time highs and, you know, his election speech versus, you know, market recession in election speech. Um, and to be honest, if Biden, all Biden has to do is prop up the stock market. That's all he has to do. That's what he's been doing. So we'll have to see. I, I like Shopify if it ever gets to $63. Uh, that's where I would like Shopify. Where did it? Yeah, that's where I would like Shopify. I'm not going to lie to you. Because on this run that Shopify has been having, if it does it right here, oh, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, we could we could draw Shopify, you know, the Fibonacci on Shopify all the way down until its first run up where you had it right here where it ran up from $24 to 46 and then came to the Fib. And then we could do the same thing right here to right here and it came to the Fib. And then we could do the same thing from this leg to the last leg. And it came, it's, to me, I think it's going to come to the fifth. And I think that's around, you know, $63, $62 um, inside this buying area. I think it goes a bit lower. But, you know, it, like I said, the market always, chop, like, it, 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 it'll draw you down for a little bit and take you back up. And then, you know, it depends on how long it draws out. But I would love to see this at $63. That would be my first buying I would, man, this gets to $63, man. Come on. Amazing. Amazing. So I like it at $63. I think it goes a bit lower. A bit lower. Anyways, let's move on. I can't believe TikTok shadow banned me, man. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's probably because I hopped on twice. I hopped on one time and then, I, and then I got off and then I hopped on again. It was probably thrown off. It was thrown off, man. But I'm glad I get to look at a lot of you guys' tickers. Let's look at Target. TNA, we basically looked at, oh, yo, Target's about to, bro. Man, oh, man, oh, man. I'm, I'm glad Target is dumping. This is what I mean. We're going to get so many good buying opportunities to where it's just gonna become so easy. It's gonna become so easy, so easy. Okay, so if you look at Target, if you look at Target, what's been happening with Target is that it's in a, it's uptrending now. And what usually happens when a stock is uptrending, it, it likes to come down and retest that 21 EMA. I think Target could potentially come down a bit more to retest that 21 EMA and get inside of that Fibonacci which would be a double confluence and to be honest that would be absolutely perfect so I would like to see target around 155 and potentially even fill this gap okay it could potentially fill this gap I would like to see it do that and come down to you know 153 154 okay so until then I think target is bearish now would I get it right would I get puts right now after it went from 172 to 166 no you would look for it to bounce up a little bit and then, you know, potentially get puts again, okay? This isn't a good entry for puts, regardless. All right? But um, anyways, 
anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this live stream i'm not gonna take you guys time for too much longer tonight i know it's friday i know you got stuff to do so i am gonna get out of here if you have any more questions just dm me in the discord and i'll look at you know whatever stock okay but um anyways thank you guys all for tuning in and uh i'll talk to you guys later i'm out peace